So, I quit my job earlier this year. 10 months have passed since then, and I still don't know if it was one of the best decisions I've ever made or the stupidest one. It honestly depends on the day you ask me. But regardless of whether it was a smart decision or a reckless one, I thought it would be interesting to share my experience. Talk through why I decided to leave, um, what life has actually been like since then, and how the reality of not having a job compares to the expectations I had going in. Right off the bat, on paper, the decision to quit doesn't feel like a good choice. The job market has been rough, layoffs everywhere, hiring freezes, AI anxiety, and roles being automated. People are fighting just to keep their jobs. Meanwhile, I had a great job. I was working on the Azure team at Microsoft, amazing coworkers, interesting problems, solid compensation, stability, everything you could reasonably want in a tech job. There was no drama, no bad manager, nothing pushing me out. If anything, it was the kind of job you should hold on to in a time like this, which is precisely why leaving made no sense on paper. But even with all that stability, there were small nudges that had started adding up. Nothing dramatic, just this quiet shift in how the day-to-day -day felt. Work slowly started feeling less meaningful. Not bad, just less energetic. More pressure to integrate AI into everything, more processes, more layers, and less of that feeling of building something meaningful. I also started craving flexibility, freedom, the ability to untether myself from a specific building, city, or a meeting schedule. I wanted to work from anywhere, anytime, to travel more, not to have my life orbit around a calendar. None of these things were deal breakers though, just signals. Quiet reminders that maybe I was ready for something different. But the truth is, none of those nudges was the reason I left. What truly pushed me was the desire to take one of my passion projects to market. I have this project that I had been quietly working on for a few years. A way to integrate science-backed learning techniques into a product that helps software engineers land jobs at big tech without the typical grind of interview preparation. Back in 2021, I released a rough proof of concept as a free Notion template, which was downloaded over 300,000 times. Even today, I still get 10, 15 requests every day from people wanting access to that template. And if you have been a subscriber since back then, you probably know what I'm talking about. So the idea was clearly valid. But that Notion version was only a tiny slice of what I knew I could build. With advancements in AI, I could create a fully adaptive prep system. Coding, system design, behavioral, all integrated with thoroughly researched and proven learning techniques. But with a full-time job, I didn't have the energy or the bandwidth to turn that into a real product. Over time, it stopped feeling like a side project and something I was deeply passionate about. That's when Preppable was born. And that's when I decided to give it a real chance. Of course, deciding to quit is one thing, actually living the reality is another. Going into it, I had a clear picture of what life would be after quitting. I expected more freedom, traveling without worrying about anything, long stretches of deep focus without meetings, um, more creative space, more room to think and build. I expected life to feel more calmer and perhaps a little more intentional. Um, and honestly, a lot of that did happen just not exactly the way I imagined. The first thing that absolutely delivered was the flexibility. I could structure my days however I wanted. Work from coffee shops, different cities, different countries. All I really needed was a laptop and decent Wi-Fi. And that freedom didn't make me distracted or lazy. Um, it actually made me more productive. I got long uninterrupted blocks of deep work that I had never had before. Priorities were clearer. It was easier to separate the signal from the noise. Travel also changed. It wasn't rushed or squeezed into a weekend. I could move slowly, explore, and think. A lot of my best ideas for Preppable came from walking around in new places. I also started journaling, not in the traditional sense, but jotting down my thoughts as voice notes, um, a great little habit I've fully adopted now, which actually brings me to something that ended up helping a lot with this. It's called Rectot, and for transparency, Viam sent it to me a while back and also have kindly sponsored this video. Let me quickly tell you about it. Rectot is a pair of earbuds that also serves as your AI companion. One quick press, say whatever idea or thought you're having, and it captures it instantly. It also has real-time transcription and translation, which is quite helpful, especially if you travel frequently to foreign countries 
or meet with people who speak a different language. You can also capture your calls, meetings, and podcasts with support for up to 100 plus languages. And Viam AI helps you extract concise summaries and actionable to-do items from lengthy recordings. Not to mention, they sound great with 11 millimeter high resolution audio drivers, feature smart noise cancellation that can reduce noise by up to 48 decibels, and offer up to 36 hours of battery life. Whether I was traveling, walking, or just thinking out loud while I was working alone, it let me save my ideas without pulling out my phone or breaking my flow. It became a pretty natural part of my new routine. So yeah, if you travel a lot, take notes frequently, or attend many meetings, I think you'll enjoy the rec talk. Check them out. I'll leave the link in the description below. Okay, back to where I was. So yes, the flexibility, alignment, and ability to work from anywhere, that part definitely matched, and in some ways exceeded my expectations. But I'd be lying if I said everything has been great. A lot of things have sucked, and some I didn't even see coming. For example, the freedom I imagined that kind of lets you disappear on a random Wednesday is technically there, but when you're trying to launch a company, you're working all the time. So that freedom is technically just on paper. You can be standing in front of the Dubai mall, looking at the tallest building in the world, and your brain still won't let you unplug. You're still thinking about your project. So I ended up working even more than before, except now there's no guaranteed paycheck. Every week felt like a small financial gamble, which brought its own set of problems. There's anxiety about money, about your financial runway disappearing faster than you expected, about whether any of this will even work out. And then there's also the loneliness. Without a team, you spend a lot of time alone. Your friends and family still operate on a traditional schedule, so your freedom doesn't actually sync with anyone else's. My wife also has a pretty hectic schedule and travels frequently, so sometimes there would be stretches of days where I wouldn't even speak a word. And then there's this constant pressure. Every day feels important. Every hour feels like it matters. Any moment that you're not working towards your goal, you feel like you're going backwards. And when the motivation dips, there's no backup. There is no manager, no teammates. It's just you. And there are also no micro rewards. You don't get anything for putting in a hard shift for six months. No promotions, no bonuses, no stock grants, no one telling you that you've been doing good. Um, I've also been at Microsoft for pretty much my entire professional career. And in some ways, my identity has been tied to being a software engineer there. So letting go of that badge felt strange in many ways. It forces you to ask, without that, who am I? Do I still have credibility? On some days, that's empowering. On other days, it's terrifying. Those are the days when you wonder if you've made a mistake. But through all of this, the good and the bad, I've also learned a lot about myself. I learned that I value autonomy way more than I realized. Even with the uncertainty and the added stress, having control over my time matters to me. I learned that freedom still requires structure. Quitting doesn't magically make you more disciplined. You have to build your own systems or you will fall apart. And I also learned that fear and growth often go hand in hand. You can be uncertain and still be on the right path. You can be scared and still become stronger. Those things can coexist. So, where am I now? Well, right now, I'm fully immersed in launching Preppable. By the time you see this video, it may even be live. My days revolve around product decisions, engineering, design, marketing, accounting, legal, financial, pretty much everything. It's exciting and overwhelming at the same time. So yeah, that's where things are right now. And I don't have a neat ending that says everything worked out perfectly. Maybe I'll report back again in six months on how the post-launch phase is going. But for now, if you're looking for a job or trying to break into big tech, please check out Preppable. I'll leave the link in the description below. Nothing would validate my decision to quit my job to pursue this more than seeing it genuinely help people land better jobs and build better careers. Also, stay tuned. I will make a complete product demo video in the coming weeks. Thanks for listening. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.